Welcome. Here we go again. Ron Martin's produced a second video claiming to expose global warming lies. This one says carbon dioxide causes dangerous global warming. So we're going to go through his video point by point and see where the real truth is. Once again, he builds his video on a false premise. He says at the very beginning of the video, as we saw from the first video, the assumption that global warming is bad or dangerous is wrong. Now in his first video, he doesn't establish that at all. He merely compares the current conditions of the planet with those from the last ice age. And that's not what we're discussing at the moment. We're discussing the possibility of a planet that is very much warmer than it is today. So maybe by 2100 or beyond, we will have a planet that could be many degrees centigrade warmer than it is now. We would be seeing major increases in sea level and inundation of some of our best farmland and also major cities by seawater. This would make for a very different world than we currently have. He then raises the question, what drives global warming? He says CO2 is not a major driver of beneficial global warming. Note that he's put the word beneficial in there, indicating that he has already come to his conclusions and the rest of the evidence here is merely to support that conclusion. That is completely unscientific. He then goes on to say scientists have since discovered that the CO2 changes were the effect of temperature changes, not the cause. The delay was as much as 800 years. Warmer temperatures drove CO2 out of the oceans, so temperature was in charge, not the other way around. It might surprise you, but on this point we agree. But only if we're talking about the initial warming that starts the transition from an ice age into an interglacial period. That's initiated generally by orbital forcing. But that only amounts to less than one watt per meter squared, which is not enough to melt the mo most of the snow and ice. It does reduce some of the snow and ice, which reduces the Earth's albedo so the Earth absorbs more of the solar radiation, which causes further warming. That warming drives more carbon dioxide out of the oceans and produces radiative forcing. And it's that forcing that produces the bulk of the warming that we see that creates the interglacial period. So overall, it is carbon dioxide that's doing the most of the work here, but it's initiated by changes in the orbital forcings and also the albedo effect uh, that uh, produces the carbon dioxide in the first place. Martin has made a number of bad assumptions. The main assumption seems to be throughout his video that only one factor can affect global temperatures. That's not true. There's a series of positive feedbacks. We have the Milankovitch cycles, albedo, greenhouse gases and aerosols in the atmosphere. There are ENSO cycles and volcanic eruptions, all of which can change global temperatures. And it's whichever one is dominant at a particular time that is the main factor. It, the interesting thing is that science predicted this 800 year lag long before the ice cores confirmed it. You can go back to papers by Jardetsky in 1961 and Sawyer in 1972 to see the origins of these sorts of discussions. But there were dozens of such papers between then and the time that the uh, ice cores uh, showed that this lag in fact existed. His next point seems to be that carbon dioxide is a weak greenhouse gas. He says, yes, CO2 is a greenhouse gas, but water vapor is by far the most important greenhouse gas. By some estimate, it accounts for 60% of the greenhouse effect. Again, we agree. But what caused the other 40%? If you look up the literature, it's something like 15% due to clouds, which again is, I suppose, another type of water vapor and CO2 and the other greenhouse gases make up the other 25%. And carbon dioxide is by far the most important of those uh, components. You can take a look at my video, CO2 or water vapor, which is the king of global warming? And you can follow the link that's down below here. But it will show you definitively that carbon dioxide is the thing that rules global warming at the moment. He then returns to this plot from the first video. Remember, this is where he claimed that the warming from 1910 to 1940 was faster than from 1970 to 2000, which when I fitted with a mathematical function proved to be exactly the other way around. But in this part of the video, he concentrates on this so-called cooling period uh, between 1940 and 1970. Well, let's try and take a look at what caused this. He claims that there was a large amount of carbon dioxide emitted during that period. Well, let's take a look at that. 
Here's the rate of increase in carbon dioxide over the last 250 years. And the grey area is from 1940 to 1970. And you can see that it is not really that much steeper than, it, than the previous 40 or 50 years. But it was increasing. Why in the 1970s did suddenly carbon dioxide take over the role of global warming? But before that it wasn't doing very much at all. Well, the point is that between 1940 and 1970, yes, there was a lot of carbon dioxide emitted, but there was also a great deal of aerosols emitted. And aerosols cool the planet, so you have carbon dioxide trying to warm the planet, and the aerosols trying to cool the planet. For this 30 years, there was pretty much a stalemate. So what happened in the 1970s to break this stalemate? A lot of countries passed Clean Air Acts, which forced industry to remove uh, aerosols from their industrial emissions. So that left carbon dioxide to uh, determine the increase in temperature from that point on, and that's exactly what happened. Having established to his satisfaction at least that carbon dioxide is not causing global warming, he says it's the sun. He states, one promising but controversial suggestion is the effect of solar wind and cosmic rays. He then asks why cosmic rays, and explains because they make tracks in the sky stimulating water vapor to become cloud nuclei. He then states Svensmark's work shows a far higher correlation with the temperature than CO2. Now these three statements have one thing in common. They're all completely wrong. Svensmark's work is not promising at all. It's been rejected by the scientific community. Cosmic rays, when they collide with the atmosphere, do form nucleation centers. However, those centers are too small and too high in the atmosphere to create clouds, at least according to the CERN experiment. And Sven Mark's work does not show a higher correlation than CO2 with global temperatures. Next he indulges in what I call graph abuse. This is a screen capture from the video of uh, the uh, Great Global Warming Swindle, which is a thoroughly discredited video to start with. But you'll notice that this plot has no um, y-axis labels here. Now there's a very good reason for that, and I'll show you by going back to the plot that this was originally derived from, which is this one. Sorry about the quality. You'll see that the y-axis for the so-called solar activity is not solar activity at all, but the length of the solar cycle. And as a solar physicist, I could tell you the length of the solar cycle has absolutely nothing to do with solar activity. But there are other fishy things about this plot as well. If you count the number of solar cycles mentioned here, there's 24 measurements. And we know that the solar cycle is about 11 years long, so 24 times 11 is 264 years. Yet this plot covers only 130 years. So we have twice as many solar cycles measured here uh, as there actually are during that time, which again is a rather fishy thing. So I went and got the data and drew the following plot. Here we have, in blue, solar activity as measured by total solar irradiance. In red, we have the global temperature. Now both of these have been smoothed by the same amount which is 11 years the solar cycle. And as you can see that after about 1970 the temperature continues to rise fairly steadily. But after 1957 the uh, solar activity seems to drop. So according to the Sven Marks theory if solar activity is dropping the magnetic field is weaker. A weaker magnetic field lets in more cosmic rays that creates more cloud and should cool the planet. So it's the exact wrong trend for what we are seeing here. Now in the video at 647 they show this plot which in blue shows cloud cover and in red the cosmic ray decrease. And the correlation does look quite good. However this plot is a trick as well. Here's the real data. In black here we have the cosmic ray fluxes and in the grey dash curve we have cloud cover. In the original plot they just showed you this part of the curve and they fiddled the y-axis for the cloud cover to make it look as though it's got the same dynamic range as the cosmic rays so it looked like a very good correlation when in fact it isn't really. But if you look at all of the data going beyond 2000 you see that the cloud cover continues to drop whereas the cosmic rays tend to go back up again. So this is the exact reverse trend of what you would uh, expect from the Svenmark theory. 
You can also see that cosmic rays have not really moved out of a, a very narrow range of uh, flux over this time period. And you'd expect there to be at least a trend one way or the other to explain global warming, and there isn't. He then goes on to say that the magnetic field that comes out of the Sun has more than doubled over the last hundred years, and as a result fewer cosmic rays have sprayed the Earth, so few clouds have formed and the consequence has been a warmer Earth. But we just showed that there's been no change in cosmic ray flux, and that solar activity has weakened as global warming took off. As a phrase that he has used quite often during this video, oops. In his conclusion he states, Carbon dioxide is not the uh, main driver of climate change. A more correct version is CO2 is not always the initial driver of climate change, it is often the main driver of climate change. He also states correlation of CO2 and temperature is non-existent. And here is the plot that I showed in the first video in this series, uh, showing that the correlation is in fact very good indeed. So if you see more of his videos or hear others espousing similar points of view, please post a link to this video. Until next time, goodbye.